Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of White Mule by William Carlos Williams. I mostly know him as a poet. I've actually read his collected poems, both volumes. It stretches like this thick. It's great. Um, but yeah, uh, he, this is one of his novels. I'm going to read you the blurb, then we're going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, William Carlos Williams, White Mule. Joe and Gurley Stetcher, Norwegian immigrants in New York, are struggling to save the life of their baby daughter. Joe, a master printer, is trapped between crooked unions and gangster bosses. By the end of the first year of their baby's life, Joe and Gurley have fought with America and survived, and have become genuine Americans. William Carlos Williams, poet and doctor, in this early novel, first published in 1937 and the first volume of a trilogy, illuminates his later and very influential poetry. His lines, A new world is only a new mind, the desert music, could be its epigraph, while the novel itself gives those lines new depths of meaning, as could be expected of the poet who more than any other of his period strove to achieve full mastery of the American idiom. White Mule is clearly and simply written, quietly moving to a wholly credible optimistic climax. The cover shows a detail from Sunday, Women Drying Their Hair by John Sloan in the Addison Gallery of Modern Art, New York. Very nice. So chapter one begins here with uh, a birth scene, which I'm gonna read. Or at least uh, an excerpt of. She entered as Venus from the sea dripping. The air enclosed her. She felt it all over her, touching, waking her. If Venus did not cry aloud after release from the pressures of that sea womb, feeling the new and lighter flood springing in her chest, flinging out her arms, this one did. Screwing up her tiny smeared face, she let out three convulsive yells and lay still. Stop that crying, said Mrs. D. You should be glad to get out of that hole. It's a girl. What? A girl. But I wanted a boy. Look again. It's a girl, ma'am. No, take it away. I don't want it. All this trouble for another girl. And the way the dialogue's written in this, it doesn't use uh, speech marks, uh, which it reminds me of Irvin Welsh in that respect, but quite innovative considering this was, you know, what was this? Published, well, first written 1937. Uh, so we get this little bit. You're a homely little run. God pardon you, she said, rubbing the spot in the top of the head. Better to leave that. I've heard you'd kill them if you pressed on that too hard. They say a bad nurse will stop a baby crying by pressing there. A cruel thing to do. Unfortunately, this baby has a lot of bad nurses and a lot of bad parenting. So for example, we get this. Uh, Look at you now, you miserable little brat, she said to it. You've got yourself all scratched to bits. So she, so she picked up the tiny reddish hands one at a time and looking closely at the nails, bit them off. It would be bad luck to cut them as well as she could. So the baby could no longer do herself a damage. And then we get this bit, which is definite abuse. First she cut off the end of the soap cake a finger long. This she pared then sharpened about an inch or two of it. Then wetting it at the faucet, she rubbed it with her fingers to take out the knife marks, smoothed it, and taking it in her hand, finally went to the baby, lifted up its flails of feet by their ankles, no bigger than her finger and not half so strong, and gently pushed the soap plug into the little hole between the buttocks. Then we get this, which I disagree with this view of what socialism is, but anyway. Uh, so she's saying, that's the trouble, they always want to take things, anything, everything. They have to be taught not to take things that are planted in the gardens. They are children. They want to take things that don't belong to them. That's the unions, revolutionists, all the same. That's what she is, a little socialist. He smiled to himself. She's right too. Take everything you can get. Let somebody else plant it and tend to it. Just take it. Well, that's not really how socialism works, but okay. For some reason, even though these are Norwegian, they talk a lot of German, and I'm learning German. One of them they said is uh, Gotterdammerung, which I think I'm, I think means God damn it, I guess. I don't, I don't really know. But it is one of those phrases I've seen in quite a few places. We get use of the word mockingly, which just annoys me. <laughs> I don't like ad adverbs. Uh, we get an unnecessary n bomb. In fact, we get a couple of them. And a man says, "Does she eat? She eats everything now, except cow's milk. I've given her cow's milk, and she vomits it." Well, maybe she's intolerant, or maybe she just, you know, doesn't like the eye. Maybe she's vegan as fuck. Team vegan, yeah. And uh, they give the cat some catnip, and it goes vicious. His look wild. Suddenly, the beast had galloped up over the back of an upholstered chair in the front room, clawing it wildly. Then diving under it, he lay on his back, clawed at the bottom, propelling himself upside down, sliding on the floor under it with vigorous strokes, all the way under the chair and out again on the other side. Look at that beast. It had been five cents worth of catnip which Gurley had tied in a little cotton bag with a red ribbon at the top and hung on a low branch of the tree. The cat had chewed a hole in it and scattered the stuff on the carpet the first thing in the morning. They all watched. The cat was now walking slowly over the carpet, his head down, his nose just touching the floor delicately, regularly as he walked, snuffing the aromatic dust. Now he found the bag again. He battered it with his paw and it disappeared under the tree. The cat stopped suddenly, not having seen where the bag had gone, and looked right and left a little bewildered. Then, lifting his head high and cocking it to one side, he saw the bag and crouched down at once. 
Then lifting his head high and cocking it to one side, he saw the bag and crouched down at once, his neck stretched out, and began to tread quickly with his back feet, wiggling his haunches eagerly from side to side. Then with a dash he pounced on the object, tossed the thing into the air, rolled over holding it in his arms and biting it while he brought his back feet into play, jabbing with spasmodic tearing motions. There's the wild beast for you, said Lindquist. Look at that. And again the cat battered the collapsed bag. Then with a long run and a slide, the forepaws held rigidly before him. He drove it under the cloth around the tree and as suddenly turned his back on it and sat down, turned up his rear parts and began to lick them carefully after which he flopped once more to the ground, completely at rest, as though nothing had happened, and in another moment was fast asleep. His forepaws folded in under his furry breast, his eyes closed and his head sunk forward until his nose rested drunkenly on the carpet. I just like that little description of the cat, you know? And then we have um, Arbach marked Das Leben Sus, uh, which I don't know what that actually means. Work makes love suspect. No, someone's kind of saying that we're feeding kids too much sugar and they say sugar's fuel it takes the place of food but they like it doctor of course they like it all they want to do is go they don't care if the engine falls apart sugar is the alcohol of children to be used the same and chocolate is their tea and coffee naturally they want it it contains a drug and drugs are useful we get a reference to ibsen who uh is a norwegian playwright and possibly poet uh, I basically only even know who Ibsen is because on The Chase, which I watch on YouTube, which is a British TV show, they always ask questions about Ibsen. So if, if the question is ever like, which Norwegian playwright, it's Ibsen. And we have Joe here, he says, Joe shook his head. There's only one way to get money, honestly, said Joe, and that's to work for it. If you don't, it has to come out of some other poor sucker's pocket. That's why I don't like the stock market, it's a swindle. I mean, I, I disagree with that, but then I make money from the stock market and cryptocurrency. Not to brag, but I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing pretty well. So yeah, White Mule by William Carlos Williams. Overall, I did enjoy it. I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5 and would certainly read some more of William Carlos Williams' prose. I do think I still enjoy his poetry more, but um, definitely an interesting start to a trilogy. It's not one of those where there's going to be like loads of stuff happening, um, but the characters are fascinating and it's interesting to kind of go on a journey with them. So there we have it. That's what I made of White Mule by William Carlos Williams. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.